My name's Eric. Bjorn Copla, uh, we're brothers. Bjorn Copeland play guitar and black dice. I play electronic. I think it's a little misleading in a way. I, when most people apply the term noise to something, it, it seems to be uh, usually like just straight abrasive music or texture. And we there's elements of that in what we do, but we definitely try to make sure that it's like a flexible enough thing that we that all our music doesn't come out sounding like really dark or violent or anything like that. So it, it is noise, but it, at the same time, I mean, the way we look at it is probably a lot more like the way someone who's making a pop song is looking at it. I mean, there's things like we try to accomplish besides just making noise. expect us to like service some sort of conduit into that but at the same time it's nice to be able to play like varied shows based on something that you know maybe isn't quite shared but you know there'll be overlap in both ways you know yeah I think that it's I mean there's <coughs> definitely co some common ground between the music you just said and you know b between bands like who are working with just straight noise like Merz Bauer or Masana or any of any of those sorts of bands and what we're there's definitely some overlap so um, but you know really all you can do is just sort of play it for whoever shows up and and hopefully you know hopefully they'll like what they hear and maybe want to listen to other stuff but it sometimes it's challenging enough just getting people to listen to what we're doing and uh, sort of take it in for what it is and you know not always making it it's so easy to make like associations based on like labels that you're on or bands you tour with and stuff but um, you know I, I hope that I hope that there's something about us that allows people to you know that encourages people to check out different types of music gotten a lot better, a lot easier in terms of that. just like it's easier to get things done now and you know like I think people know about us more than so yeah I mean we definitely play more interesting shows at this point which has been been nice but it still is sort of a it can still be a pretty challenging show for a lot of a lot of people depending on like you know the specifics of the show um, some parts of the country the stuff will go over really well and then other nights you can clear a room, or we can clear a room pretty fast. To, um, but yeah, I mean, in this format, it's basically, it started off like in a lot more musical, I mean, it, was, it sounded a lot more like thrash or something, or old hardcore, and we started off, and eventually, like, we just started getting more and more into, like, some of this, the sounds that were coming out, out of our instruments, like, almost by accident, and just started becoming more and more interested in 
making our songs with different source sounds rather than just like the straight one, like the, you know, the, rather than just bass, guitar, and drums, and vocals. Although, I mean, I think compared to a lot of bands that are straight, are considered like straight noise, we almost have like a rock setup, and, and our approach is in, in some ways, I think very much like a rock <coughs> approach to, to making the music that we make. Definitely, I'll have more of a history with rock music and pop music and punk music. But um, it seems like the more you listen to music and the more of your life is spent making it, the more you're sort of looking for things outside of, you know, uh, looking for other things that are going to be interesting. So I'd say that our influences, musically at least, are fairly diverse. I mean, everybody listens to a ton of different types of music and um, whether or not that's auto you know comes across to the to the listener is sort of a different thing but um, yeah. <laughs> Playing like an opening slot for another band is, it sounds cool, but it's never, I don't know, it, it's not like, I feel like we have personal measures that maybe are more exciting than, than like more of a... Yeah, a lot of time our smaller shows that we do, I think the last time we played in New York was in our friend's little record store in his apartment, which is like the size of this room. And um, I mean, that was like a show that was super fun. I think the, the Throbbing Gristle one will be, I mean, it's definitely flattering to have bands that you, um, that you respect. I think that's, a, with us, I don't, none of us are really huge fans of listening to industrial music all the time, but there's certainly a respect for, for you know, other artists that have been, you know, have sort of come before and are, have done interesting things, so. As far as that, I mean, as far as like just being invited, it definitely is flattering. Although, at this point, we've done enough sort of bigger. I guess we've done enough shows that are sort of like big festival type shows to know that like it can go either way. So, as long as we go there and are just excited about playing, then that's usually all we, you know, like all we can do. So, but it is, it will be exciting. I mean, we're I mean, definitely anxious to go, and I'm curious to see like a lot of a lot of these the other bands that are playing so I think it'll be I don't know I think it'll be fun and definitely at least interesting <laughs> This summer, at least, we did so we did so many festivals in Europe and went to J Japan and we did like one of the 
all tomorrow's parties like in LA. And so there's been like in the last year we've sort of um, you know been fortunate enough to be invited to like a lot of these things and it seems like with a, a lot of the people that are booking these festivals um, I don't know I guess think that we maybe round out the bills like in an interesting way or something so it's I don't know. Overall, it's been like a really nice way for us to be able to afford to go to all these places that we wouldn't be able to in the past. I think right now, like we just got done, basically being gone for the whole summer. So the idea of leaving New York again anytime soon is a little bit unappealing. But by spring, I think it'll be really, really. We just haven't been writing that much new material. So I think that's kind of where our priorities lie now. It's just sort of like buckling down writing all this stuff and and then you know then dealing with all the festivals and upcoming shows when they, they happen again in the spring so. just such like a different project that it's nice to have a <clears throat> you know like a new approach no matter what the outcome's going to be like that 12 was very much a sort of like a one idea that <clears throat> none of us want to do anymore because I feel like we did it okay you know like that record's pretty good and we worked we worked hard on it but I wouldn't want to like repeat that record again and sort of each record's kind of been a little bit different like just how we've gone into recording it or, or you know like if we had the material written beforehand or afterwards or just like different mixing processes so I feel like now we're just we're kind of like in the middle of a new of recording a new record and it's really different than the first one and I feel like really it's, different from that 12 especially yeah I feel like it's more just about sort of I don't know just kind of approaching as it comes and all we have to do is make ourselves happy for the most part and I mean each project is sort of approached a little bit differently that 12 was definitely um, you know we made decisions about it that you know that were specific to that release and the way that you know we're going to approach finishing the second album is a lot different than the way we went about doing the first album I mean after you've made after you've played like the songs live a bunch of times and the you've heard the recordings numerous times I mean you start certain things start to become a little bit more visible about you know maybe patterns that are happening like in the song like maybe if you're you know what I mean? Like maybe one person is sort of doing a similar thing in a couple different songs. And so it's nice to have like, have those records out just to have like sort of a point of departure to start working on all new stuff. So, um, and most of the stuff that we're, I guess I, I, it didn't really seem this way to me, but just having been out playing these last like five or six shows, it's been sort of surprising how different a lot of people think what we've been playing live is than what you know came out on the album or what they saw us playing last time so um, it can be a I don't know it's an ongoing cycle I guess we make new stuff and then by the time it comes out on record we're not really doing it anymore so it makes it really it, it makes it a little challenging sometimes to be to be touring stuff because people are definitely wanting to hear something that they just heard on the record and you know, like tonight's set is not, like nothing's been released of it. it it's all newer I guess and yeah it's I don't know I feel like it's always been like <coughs> sometimes it'd be I don't know it'd be a nice place to be where you could recommend something that or if someone came up and inquired about a certain song you could point them in the right direction but but I also think that it's nice again just to like keep ourselves occupied and, and happy and working and I feel yeah. like that's more important and I don't know well, at least like the most, it's kind of the most crucial, I don't know, consideration that, yeah, we like as far as the longevity of the band is. I mean, once it stops being interesting, I mean, for us, like it'll, it's just playing the same set like a few nights gets pretty uninteresting. So it's a, 
it's always just like a matter of just trying to stay involved and for all of us to be excited about it. That's kind of why it just constantly changes a lot. Certainly not because we're trying to latch on to anything or lose fans. This is kind of a common occurrence these days, it seems like. To a studio we were sort of trying out like a lot of gear that they had there and really weren't into any of it i mean it's um you know, no one had like a relationship with the, any yeah. of the sounds or like how anything worked and then <clears throat> you know like even putting it through your stuff made it a little bit more but for the most part i feel like it is kind of what Bjorn was saying just like a lot of it's just like the equipment is kind of budget but there, yeah it's really not that secretive mm -hmm. lots of delays yeah it's a lot of a lot of delays um, a lot, a lot of like um, small like loops. Are, a lot of like the vocals or um, sounds that are being picked up by the microphones going into the mix mixers are just like cut up into so that they're more rhythmic or more arrhythmic, and um, so that you know those things change from night to night, and we're all kind of connected between like my guitar goes out my amp, but I also have a sec second output that goes to Aaron through his mixer, so if I play something, he can take it and pan it all over, or Eric can take that send, or... Because then I have a send from Aaron, and I, which can pick up Bjorn's, yeah. you know, like... And his Shams drum machine and vocals go, so it's, I don't well, know... I was just trying out new things, like, the whole idea of sends was pretty new until, you know, like six months ago but all of a sudden it just kind of, I don't know I feel like we just try a lot of stuff and <coughs> a lot of it is just kind of like spending time together and working it out but plus we've gotten more and our tastes have just sort of changed a lot and at, the, at this point I mean a lot of us listen I don't know we, I mean we all listen to so many different types of music that it's um, it's kind of nice to see how I guess just how differently you, music is approached by different individuals making it and we, I, I mean at this point we've just been playing long enough that we have like very specific tastes as far as like what what's engaging and, and what isn't and what you know what is successful about a piece of music and what we dislike about it so we there's a lot of talking that goes on when when we're working on things but um, being able to sort of share the responsibilities literally at this point and trade off sounds has become um, something that, you know, I think has opened up a lot of doors as far as like our ideas about making music and um, the equipment is a part of it. I mean, part of the reason the music keeps evolving is we'll be acquiring little things or, you know, replacing pieces of equipment with new things. but. It basically comes down to just like our tastes and just us being able to, you know, communicate what, you know, what's interesting to us. <laughs> 